Welcome to the Game Loop, your weekly dose of gaming news, insights, and hot takes. So sit back, relax, and jump into the loop. Welcome to the Game Loop, your weekly update for all things gaming. I'm joined today by some awesome guests. Uh, I've got Ray343, the gaming cyborg, and Purple Haze with me this week uh, to dive into the latest gaming topics, talk about what they've been playing, and titles that they're excited for. So I'm going to let them go ahead and introduce themselves. And uh, Purple, why don't we start with you? Yeah, so I'm Purple Haze, uh, host of Shades of Purple. Uh, just super excited to be here, gamer of all things hack and slash, puzzle, and I don't know, horror? I guess we'll go with that. <laughs> all right, Ray, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself as well? Man, I'm the OG Ray3473, the gaming cyborg, and uh, love playing Marvel Snap. I'm addicted to playing Marvel Snap. I probably played me about four or five hours um and then i hang around in my discord with my friends and uh just game and i love gaming been gaming for a long time excellent excellent well thank you both for joining us this week and uh we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into the news and the first story we're gonna dive into is actually one that stood out to me uh i've got some uh skin in the game on this one as you know i'm currently working on my own game for folks that didn't know but uh, Halo recently announced that they're changing the game engine in which Halo is built on. They're also uh, changing, like rebranding from 343 Studios to uh, Halo Studios. So I, I don't know how I feel about that latter part. I, I feel like 343 is kind of like iconic and, and kind of has some, some resonance with it. Uh, the game engine changes, I'm sure we can dive into those. I've got my opinion on it. I, I think a lot of their reasoning makes sense. Uh, but I'd love to hear you guys weigh in. Ray, why don't we start with you? Um, well, first of all, uh, man, I love 343 Industries because I played a lot of their games. But I'm going to have to get used to Halo Studios. But, man, I'm, I'm you know, at first I was like, mm, Unreal Engine 5. I mean, I'm all for innovating and, and changing the game and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't wait. Um, I'm curious to see what it looks like. Uh, sometimes I'm like, if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. You know, just stay and keep what's working. Cause, uh, I'm old G man. I like the old classic halo. Uh, but games. was it working is the question because I know they attribute a lot of the delays on the most recent halo yeah. due to how old their engine was. Cause some of the components of that engine for anybody that did not know are like 25 years old. So 25 is, years ago, they were cutting edge, but it really delayed them in getting out some of the DLCs and, and other things uh, from all the sources that I dug into. See, so maybe a good I, change. Who knows? But I had so much fun playing the early, like when Halo 1 came out, I had a lot of fun playing that Halo 2. Uh, and I know this is, I mean, I'm dating myself. Like we're talking like <laughs> early 2000s. Uh, we used to have Halo Night. And I, I just remember those days, but, and I had fun. And then, they came, then they started doing like a, a, a RTS Halo. Then they started doing uh, all kinds of different other stuff. But I don't know. I'm, I'll, I'll see. Okay. We'll and, see. And how about you, Purple? Yeah. So I think I lean towards Ray's uh, kind of side of things here. Um, obviously, using Unreal Engine 5, very powerful engine. Um, but when you change engines, right, you're, there's gonna, you're going to most likely feel it. Right in the gameplay, there is something to call, to say there about the signature. I do think it's probably a cost saving move in the long run. Probably not up front, but it's definitely an investment in the long run. Um, the the biggest thing I, I think about is when I look at the you know what makes Halo iconic is it it is a first person shooter. That's what people remember. Obviously, there's campaigns to it, so I don't want to just make it seem just mm -hmm. like it's a first person shooter. Uh, obviously, we saw some third person elements that they teased there. Uh, and if we think about it, like what are some Unreal Engine 5 games that use third person and first person? Um, when we think about using Unreal, I, I wonder if Halo is going to feel maybe a little bit too much like those games. And right now what I'm thinking about is obviously you have Fortnite as well as um, on the first person side, the one that just came out last year at the finals. So mm -hmm. um, that is really where I... Uh, I'm wondering, and from my perspective, you know, Halo was usurped by Destiny uh, and Destiny 2, not necessarily because of the gunplay, 
or, or the, the gameplay, but more or less because of the updates, which to your point, Joe, potentially this is going to speed that up. But I could also probably make the same argument about the expansions and just the updates to the game overall. And so we'll see. Maybe this yeah. is a move in the right direction. Maybe it's not. Yeah, for sure. I think one of my biggest concerns with it would be, and it kind of goes along with what you said, Perp, is it going to have that that like Unreal Engine look? You know what I mean? Like you can tell some most of the time when a game has used like the Unity Engine or the Unreal Engine. They just have that kind of look to it. Uh, you know, so I, I wonder if it's going to um, water down the, the IP a little bit, I guess, is, is kind of, you know, what I'm getting at. So time will tell and, and we'll have to see. Um, so we'll move right on to the next one, which I know Ray is excited about. And we <laughs> chatted about this a little bit. I'm not super familiar with this one. So, Ray, you're going to have to help me out here. But uh, Starship Troopers Extermination. So it's a you know co-op alien shooter. It's exiting early access October 11th. So... Uh, by the time this podcast comes out, it'll be the day after this podcast drops, actually. And uh, they have a new campaign where you can play as, like, Johnny Rico, like the original character from the movie. Uh, you know, so, Ray, are you looking forward to the jumping into some bug-stomping action or what? Man, first of all, uh, I am a huge fan of the uh, the Starship uh, Troopers brand. I mean, they, when the movie came back in 1985... Uh, oh my God, I really loved that movie. And so I was like, when are they going to come out with a game? When are they going to come out with a game? So they actually came out with a, a couple of games. One was an RTS, and then they came out with Starship uh, Troopers Extermination, which I do have. Um, I've been playing that uh, with uh, Callie, actually uh, streams that a lot. And so we've been playing that, having a blast with that game um and it's because it's and it's weird because i know hell divers 2 everybody that's the other bug game that's really popular but this <laughs> game is different because you can actually build your base uh you can build turrets you can build your weapons and all kinds of stuff and balls preparing for the horde of bugs that are going to stomp on you eat you and tear you apart um there's also you're going down in caves uh looking for uh bug nests and stuff so man this game is is really really fun i think i like out of a one out of ten i give this game like a nine and now that they're adding johnny rico campaign uh i can't wait to play that campaign so i think everybody i think it's gonna be a really really popular game okay okay how about you purple is this one you're you're familiar with that you've that you've played checked out so no, not, I haven't checked it out. I, I thought, you know, uh, I haven't played it. I'll say it like that. Um, but you know, obviously any type of, anytime you're, you're bringing in, um, something such as like IP from movies into games or mm -hmm. games to, to movies. I, I think it's, ex it's exciting to see that it builds on lore. And I think a lot of fans of franchises love lore. And so it could definitely bring people who potentially aren't gamers, but are fans of the the franchise, right? Because you have the movie franchise, there's also the book franchise, and now you have a game franchise. Uh, I think that could be kind of exciting to see how it builds on that. Uh, I thought it was interesting. Ray brought up um, uh, what Hell Divers. Because that game I actually was thinking of that is, I think it's Bugs, is the one that just came out, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2. Oh. Um, you know, mm -hmm. that one just came out that also gives you that co-op experience and you're shooting lots of like alien bugs and stuff. So uh, that one and then and then I think the other one that's about to come out is Art. Raiders, another one from Embark Studios. That that mm -hmm. so I think the these types of games are having their moment, and I'm excited. You know, something that actually I guess Space Marine also has some established IP, but obviously to to revitalize the Starship Troopers IP is pretty cool. Okay, fair enough. And uh, we'll move right along to the next one here. I'm kind of excited about this one. Might have a little bit of a hot take, but uh, so Undisputed Boxing. Uh, you know, is releasing on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X and S on October 11th. Uh, you know, in the absence of like a EA Fight Night update. So I, I know this can be like a polarizing topic because you get like your EA Fight Night for fans and then like people that are interested in Undisputed or just looking for like a quality boxing game to kind of fill the void. 
Uh, so I'd love to get y'all's take on this. And uh, Purple, why don't we start with you? Yeah, so I think it's pretty cool. I think fighting uh, boxing fans have been asking for a new boxing game for a while. I know one of my favorite boxing, it's probably the only, well, no, let me take that back. You have Mike Tyson punch out was probably the original boxing game I played. And then <laughs> one that I really loved playing with my dad. And it's really special because my dad didn't really play games that much was knockout Kings 2001. And uh, so I just remember that time. And when I was coming back to game or just, you know, experiencing gaming throughout the years, boxing was just one of those that I felt was missing uh, the love given to it. So for them to come back, obviously, I'm a I'm a huge fan of what was formerly Embracer Group. I don't know what they call themselves now. Uh, I'm just like, hopefully it's doing well. I believe it's Saber Interactive who's doing the game. I, I, I may have so, to yeah. check. Is it is it Saber? I believe so. Yeah. So Saber is obviously is, has some great. They've had some wins recently, and yeah, I'm really interested to see it. Like, what fires do they bring? Like, what is kind of like do the the modes in it, and like how do they? Yeah, just how do they bring some of the legends, especially since 2001. Uh, we've had some pretty big fighters and some celebrity people coming in, right? Mm -hmm. If we think of Logan Paul, if we think of Conor McGregor, if we think about some of those fights that generated a lot of buzz, obviously Floyd Mayweather and what he did, um, that was probably, I mean, he was definitely big at the end of the 2000s, but, you know, where he cemented his status uh, as probably the greatest fighter ever was probably post-2000, this game. So I'm just really curious how they match some of these greats uh across generations okay fair enough and ray i know you've got an opinion on this one so uh why don't you go ahead and jump in yeah so i actually do have undisputed boxing game i got it uh when it was in early early access i got it for a birthday present from a good friend okay, Kevin. Very cool. um so this game you're gonna see a lot of boxers from the uk so um, hmm. the Gypsy King, if uh, he is actually uh, on the, I think he's like on the cover of the box, and um, and it's very. Uh, first of all, I'm a huge, 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 and shout out for talking about uh, Knockout Kings 2001 uh, Purple. That was one of my favorite boxing games, and also I was a huge fan of EA Fight Nights and Undisputed Boxing Game. Guess what, guys? You're gonna like this game because the controls are easy. Uh, when I played early access, uh, the controls are kind of weird. And so, uh, and I'm just being honest, I stopped playing it. But then I heard they did an update. I went back, played it again, and loved it. I was knocking guys out um, in the ring. Um, it gets, you're going to get ready to button smash uh, when you get knocked out and you got to get back up. But um, I think this game is going to be great. And, um, you know, um, boxing games was... Uh, very very popular back in the day so i'm glad that they're going back to that because all you see is mma and ufc and and wrestling and nobody really like hey come on man we need a boxing game so i think you guys are gonna like this one okay excellent excellent and uh so now the next couple few news topics we're going to discuss is kind of a uh, aligns with the spooky season here you know it being october so the first one we're going to dive into is the silent hill 2 remake which uh, dropped on October 8th. Uh, so updated visuals, you know, same kind of atmosphere, that type of thing. Uh, so I'd love to hear y'all's take on, on Silent Hill 2. Is it something you plan on revisiting or diving into? And uh, Purple, why don't we start with you? Yeah, sorry about that. I was on mute there for a second. Uh, hey, so right. yeah, so I, um, I stream horror, right? That's what my main content is unless I'm running like a, uh, Fall Guys tournament or something for my channel, but I stream horror. Uh, Silent Hill is probably not the horror I stream. Like there's certain horrors I really like, but again, just like we talked about earlier with Star Trek Troopers, uh, revitalizing an IP, right, a beloved IP, uh, I think is super uh, on point. Um, playing the game, I believe they're coming out with the new Silent Hill movie. Uh, oh, not, not too not far off. I think it's either releasing this year or early next year. So it's kind of falling into that, getting, I think, prepared for that, getting that movie crowd who wants maybe to know more about the lore, because I think games and really developing a fan base is so much about the lore. And when you have interactive entertainment, 
such as video games, there's just so much you can explore with it. So I know some people are disappointed with remakes. I think this one is scoring actually pretty well around an 86 or 87 Metacritic score. Mm -hmm. And um, so with that, again, like I never was like really into Silent Hill, the game. I know there's Silent Hill, the movies that I've seen. um, But anything that just adds to story, adds to lore, adds to the experience, uh, I'm all for. So this one definitely gets two thumbs up for me. Excellent. Excellent. Good to hear. Good to hear. And uh, how about you, Ray? Is this one that you will be checking out? Is this on your list of games to play? Man, I'm look just like uh, Purple Haze. I love my scary games. I love turning the lights out and, and I love jump scares. I mean, um, Silent Hill. Oh, my God. I remember playing the original in my uh, studio apartment with the lights out. I'm excited. And as far as people about the remakes, let me tell you something. I played the, on a PS1. Do you know what the graphics were on a PS1? The poly? <laughs> Come on, folks. You don't want a remake? Yeah, I want a remake. I want those um, updated graphics. I want the updated sound. Uh, I'm excited for it. I don't know if I'm going to play it on my PS5 or the PC, uh, but I'm excited. Um, and I'm excited about the movie. I'm excited about the game. And um, come on, man, fans, uh, I think people are going to like this game when it comes out. Excellent. Excellent. Good to hear. So now we're going to journey down to the lake house because uh, Alan Wake 2 DLC comes out uh, later this month. And uh, for this one, to be completely honest, I have yet to finish the first Alan Wake. So I'm a little behind the power curve. You know, I got to I got to get with the times here. But, uh, you know, there's only so many games and, and so little time, but we'll get there. Uh, this is one that I definitely plan on checking out. And what uh, what stood out to me um, with this particular announcement was uh, some of the crossover that's happening with, with some of their other, other games. There's some crossover uh, with Control, uh, which is another one of uh, Remedy's other games. Uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting because I, I feel like that's not something we've seen very often. Uh, so I'd love to get you guys to weigh in on it. And uh, Ray, why don't we start with you? Oh, my God. They're going to take you back to Cauldron Lake. Let me tell you something. Uh, This game gave me so many jump scares. I even had to turn on the lights. Uh, There was a scene. Spoiler alert. But there's a scene where you're kind of like in a morgue hospital. And this guy that's supposed to be dead. He jumps up and he's alive and he's running around the place. That scared me so bad. Um yeah, I'm I'm excited. I, I just like you. Um, I'm probably about eighty percent done with Alan Wake two. Uh, so uh, once I get done, dude, I, my backlog is crazy. I'm pretty sure you guys is. I mean, there's so many games coming out. So, but this is one that, um, yeah, I will get the DLC. I will get it. Excellent, excellent, good to hear. And uh, purple, I, I take it this is one that you're pretty uh, pretty excited about. Yeah, so I I streamed Alan Wake One on my channel and I and I beat it in front of the audience. Alan Wake Two, uh, I think what they did there, obviously uh, there was some controversy with the protagonist in the game. I actually mm-hmm. thought she brought a lot to the game. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't right. know. Like I thought she brought so much to the game. Um, you know, in the story that unfolds there, uh, the game mechanics that they brought to Alan Wake Two, right, where she kind of goes into her mind and she does like this mind melding and just detective work at from that level, I thought was really cool. Uh, I did not did not finish it, but I did know about the crossover between Control and Alan Wake. So mm-hmm. that you know, I think with the first one in Control, obviously we were Stadia fans, so we had Control on Stadia, <laughs> and uh, so I think that was a little like. I think it's like one line that there's like this connection and then Alan Wake 2 kind of builds upon it definitely towards the end uh, from what I've been told. So if you have a game that is definitely more or less connecting the two together and bringing Cauldron Lake there, like obviously Sam Lake, if you ever heard him write about it, he it seems like he's one of these people who I believe in the years coming up is going to be kind of seen as like a Kojima type of game uh, writer just because of the way he thinks about things and how he intertwines his universe. So like I said, if there's anything today that I will talk about, it's just like building the lore, like building it piece by piece by piece mm-hmm. and just having a little here, a little there. And Alan Wake has their fans through and through. 
uh, control, probably not so much. We haven't seen so much coming back from control, but the more you just intertwine this and intertwine this and intertwine this, I'll say like this, I can't wait till the Alan Wake movies come out because this has Mm, a story that I think really does well crossing over to the silver screen. Right. For sure. Yeah. No, the the movies look uh, super interesting and and looking forward to to those as well. Uh, But now if you're looking for more spooky vibes, we're going to dive into post trauma, which drops on October 29th for uh, PS5 PC it uh, blends classic uh, horror mechanics with like eerie fixed camera angles. Um, so from, uh, you know, being a, a game nerd, uh, I thought the game mechanics is what really kind of drew me into this one. Cause uh, being a hundred percent transparent, I'm not a huge horror game enthusiast. I'm, I'm just not. Uh, but for this one with just based on the game mechanics alone, I, I may check this one out. So, uh, Ray, I know this is one that you were kind of potentially looking at. Um, what do you yeah, think about this? Yeah, man. Um, some of the uh, – I've looked at some of the images. Uh, there's an image with a big old blob with all these eyes. Uh, there's this mm-hmm. old-looking janitor-looking guy kind of <laughs> walking through the hallways and stuff. I get, When I look at it, it gives me Resident Evil vibes, mm-hmm. which um, if it has that type of kind of classic mechanic, I'm all – like, me, man, look, I'm all for the the – the scare and the horror. So yeah, I'm, I'm down. Um, I'll check it out. Um, and see, see, see what the, see what, how people are uh, talking about it. Maybe look at some people stream it and then decide on if I want to get it or not. Okay. Fair enough. And uh purple is one that was on your radar. So, yeah, so it's survival horror, right? So yeah. I know, Joe, you're not a big horror person, but there's definitely different categories of the horror games. And this yeah, is survival sure. horror. And I think it's super interesting you put this one on here because one of the OG survival horror games we just talked about because it just had a remake, right? And that is Silent Hill. And yeah. especially when you look at this game and you look at the camera angles, you look at the fact that you have like resource management, you mm-hmm. look at those aspects, you can't help but think post-trauma is probably like a spiritual successor to something like a Silent Hill. And so when I look at this, uh, I, 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 let me just first off saying, I think horror as a genre, whether we're talking about books, whether we're talking about movies, whether we're talking about storytelling, we've seen that as a genre in the medium of telling stories survive throughout time. Mm -hmm. Like if you think about there's any period of media, there's a horror story. And so I'm really excited to see where post trauma is going with their story. It's coming from a dev being published by a publisher that aren't necessarily as big Mm -hmm. and sometimes in a industry that is sometimes dominated by giant organizations that maybe get stuck in the mud with their ideas or try to repeat something. Fresh blood is always great. Fresh ideas. (laughs) And uh, maybe the the idea that was that pun intended, no pun intended. (laughs) Uh, and, And, uh, and so I really am excited just to see what where they're going with it. Is this just a rehash of some storylines before or have they really been inspired? And are they going to give us something that's a little different for those fans? Hey, okay. J- Joe, I just wanted to add it. Uh, my wife, my high school sweetheart, the first date, our first date, we went to go see Misery. Okay. Misery. And I remember her just that crazy lady and what she did to that guy and to his ankle and his legs yeah. uh, and her just jumping and scared. And I'm just like, why would you take me to something like this? And um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, dude, I love, I love uh, suspense and horror. So yeah, I'm excited. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Well, now we're going to drift a little bit away from kind of the spooky topics and dive into some more hardware news. Uh, So if anybody was looking in the news, PS5 Pro sales were off to a slow start. Uh, So I'd be curious to get people's um, opinion on that type of thing, because I can remember the days of, you know, heck, when the Switch came out, you know, you couldn't get it for weeks. You could, you know, it was hard to get, you know, last PlayStation that, you know, came out before, couldn't get one. They're all, you know, on eBay and all over the place. And this really didn't launch, it seems, to, to that as big a fanfare. Um, so I know there's been a ton of discussion about the, you know, PS5 Pro and the cost and all the things. Uh, so I don't personally own a console, so I don't have any kind of, uh, I don't have a dog in this fight per se. Uh, but I'd be curious if either of you plan on picking up the PS5 Pro, uh, 
and uh, you know what your thoughts are on kind of the slow uh, slow sales. So, uh, Purple, why don't we start with you? Yeah, so I think so. The only thing that launched was September twenty fifth, and it was the online sales. Right. And yep. the online sales, I will say this: the the site actually had a glitch, like where you where it was mm. showing that you could order it. So I went through the answer. So to answer your question, I'll answer it kind of in a different way. I do plan on picking it up. Okay. Uh, and the site actually had a glitch to where you could get through the whole process. For one, you had to wait in line for like an hour to get to the storefront on PlayStation storefront to order it. And you could go all the way through and the final, you put your credit card information and everything and you play, you press place order and it wouldn't let you click it. Like it was highlighted, but it was huh. like you click it and it wouldn't let you click. So I know that happened to not just me, but to a few people. And I know myself as well as to others we're like, you know what? We don't want to mess with it. Let's wait till it comes out, whether it's Best Buy or Target. For me, they're they're kind of in the same shopping center. So I plan on picking it up then, and I know two other people are picking it up then. Um, but with just with any, uh, you know, of the Pro Series, um, usually these only sell like one to four, like 20% of the overall mm -hmm. sales of a generation. Based upon what I've seen, this is a, a, a fairly decent leap if you're into playstations and the one thing i will say that probably isn't apparent now but it's going to probably become apparent next year is that playstation is saying like hey there's going to be games that are enhanced for uh playstation 5 so it's going to say like ps5 pro enhanced uh one of those games and we're going to talk about this later is uh diablo 4 Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're a huge Diablo fan, even though Diablo's by Xbox, like if you want to get the best fidelity for that in a console form, it's going to probably be on the PS5 Pro. But the biggest thing I think is really going to be interesting is there's literally a game launching next year that is a console seller. Right. You're going to only be able to get it on console. It's probably the biggest launch in the next two years. And that's Grand Theft Auto uh, 6. So mm -hmm. if we think about that and if we think about this, it's going to probably be the, the most solid of the consoles. Mm. I'm not necessarily worried about an online launch. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out through the holiday season when it actually hits retailers. Retail, I yeah. think it's November 8th. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I think this is really kind of playing off of some of those bigger titles coming out in 2025, 2026, 2027, kind of when we see the biggest launches for any generation of gaming. So uh, ultimately I'm getting it. I, I, I don't know what to make of like an online sales type of situation. Like order, it's yeah. really about the demand in stores that I look forward to. And yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I, I will add that. I believe I read today that starting in the next, uh, 24, 48 hours, you'll be able to pre-order through, uh, retailers, like regular retailers, like the Walmarts and targets and, and best buys of the world. Uh, so, so that'll, that'll be interesting to see how, how that kind of all shakes out as well. Uh, but how about you, Ray? Are you in the market for a PS5 Pro or not? You know what? I have a PS5 and I'm happy with my PS5. Um, I made my investment when Stadia closed. I got a peep with my Stadia, uh, refund check. I went and bought a PC <laughs> and it's a PC that, um, I can upgrade. Um, I, I was looking today is prime day guys. Don't forget the prime day sales. And I was looking at <laughs> some, uh, some graphic cards and stuff and they do have some graphic cards on sale and, and um but i i, I think it, it's awesome because it is going to be the most powerful console out there and i know there's a lot of guys that are not pc uh savvy and they don't want to deal with a pc and stuff like that and if you don't want to deal with a pc then this is about as close you're gonna get to like a pc graphics um it, it, this thing is powerful no doubt about it but uh, with me, I mean, I'm happy uh, with my PS5 and I'm just going to uh, usually just probably play on the computers. But you never know, because I do have uh, my son and he might want to. Uh, I don't know. I mean, he, he wants to switch, too, which we're going to be talking about later. Uh, but, um, mm, yeah, I mean, so what I hear you saying this might be on like the, the Christmas roster then for free. For but you know what? I got to see the games. Evan, there. if you're listening, dad yeah. said he'll get it for you. PS5 Pro under the Christmas tree, buddy. I got to see, but you know what? I got to see that. But <laughs> I, and I'll just be honest and keep it real. I got to see some games. 
Um, it was nice that they showed it off, but and 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 purple's right. But that's all my son. He even has it on a ca- like on a calendar, marking off GTA, GTA, GTA. Oh, really? And, and yeah, he dude. I've spent we spent so much money on shark cards for to upgrade his gaming in GTA. It's either uh, Fortnite with V bucks or shark cards for GTA. That's all he ever plays. <laughs> and so, um, and I know he's gonna want the best console to play that game and so mm. is it is an investment that i'll probably do in the future most definitely I and mean, we'll see me personally no but for my son yeah we'll see we'll see okay fair enough fair enough so now we're going to dive into our last news item which is something i threw in last minute because uh when i saw this one i, I honestly didn't know how to feel about it like i first saw it and i thought wow this is cool so we're talking about the nintendo sound clock alarmo i think is is what they're calling this thing and it's got like a like a sensor in it so like if you move it'll shut your alarm off and it plays you know like 30 some odd games like little clips on this little digital uh digital screen the thing's a hundred bucks and this is what we get instead of a switch 2 announcement we get a nintendo themed alarm clock Now, granted, like, if my oldest saw this, like, she probably would be like, Dad, I want the Nintendo alarm clock. So I I get it. It's probably not marketed towards me. Uh, But it kind of just rubbed me the wrong way that instead of, like, actual Switch 2 information, we're getting, look at this Nintendo alarm clock that looks like a Nintendo version of an Amazon Echo Spot, if you've ever seen one of those. It's literally, take, like, the little round Echo Spot thing with the screen on it, make it Nintendo Colors... And and that's what it looks like. Uh, so I'd love to hear you guys kind of weigh in on this one, how you feel about the whole here's your $100 Nintendo alarm clock and, and not information about the Switch 2. Uh, so, Purple, why don't we start with you? Well, I'm interested. I'd start with that. I'm interested to hear Ray's take first. Okay. Sure, it. sure, sure. Ray, let's let's go for it. Uh, well, first of all, uh, no, I'm not getting the clock. You know what this reminds me of is when we really wanted a new Zelda game. When was the Zelda game going to come? When was this? And they just kept making these like little games, little games. And then finally, uh, the the hit Zelda game came out. This is what it reminds me of. But dude, the only thing I'm interested in is the Switch 2. That's all I care about. I don't want a clock. I just want the Switch 2. <laughs> and um, but for all the Nintendo fanatics out there, hey, enjoy your clock because I know there's going to be people getting it. But yeah, I just want to hear about the Switch 2 and when it's coming out. That's all I want to know. So, Okay, fair enough. Purple? Yeah, so I think, I actually think a different way about it, right? I think it's definitely not something people need. Obviously, a lot of people are looking forward to Switch 2. I think this is just a, another, I don't think this is a replacement for the Switch 2 announcement. We know that Switch 2 is going to hit markets probably around March of 2025. Mm-hmm. So we're not going to get it any sooner or any uh, later because of this alarm clock. I think what's interesting about it is, you know, there's been a lot of conversation about the cost of the alarm clock, but if we think about what it can do, whether it's it's monitoring your sleep patterns, it does have some soundscapes to it. There is some animation to it. It does connect via Wi-Fi. Uh, it's actually kind of well-priced when you when you look at other alarm clocks. Obviously, it right, has. Yeah, when you look at other smart alarm clocks, well, smart do alarm clocks things for sure. Yeah, yeah. And if 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 the thing if if you are into the those themes, I think it's really well. But I do have uh, an announcement about this uh, because I wanted to hear y'all's too. Uh, because I I actually oh uh-huh, look uh, at that! I actually <laughs> did go mm-hmm. up and pick it up at the New York City store today uh, as it launched. Um, so I I I'm probably going to make a video whether it's about unboxing or about the the um what it can do. Uh, I I have a couple of different alarm clocks, but you know anytime I can hear Pikmin or Zelda, uh, <laughs> I thought it was interesting. So um, they know their audience. Right. Yeah. They know that this could easily find uh, people wanting it for the holiday season. Uh, the fact that the inventory is very limited to just, mm-hmm. you know, a handful of outlets. Um, all I'm saying is this is how you get like the Tickle Me Elmos, the Cabbage Patch Kids, <laughs> like, the, yeah, like those types of that those. You start that's to true. get that demand. Yeah. And I mean, um, I stood in line for a Hatchimal. I'll, I'll admit it. You know? <laughs> or Tamagotchi. We've seen it throughout the yeah. that these things launch around this time. 
Uh, am I saying it's going to do that? No, but I think for what it does do, like if you go on Etsy and look for a Nintendo alarm clock, you're going to see something for like $150. That's literally just Mario uh, punching the time. So mm, um, yep. I I think they're obviously I was the one who bought it and when I went in there was like literally one left out of a out of a, a shipment of 500 really wow yeah. well there was uh-huh. actually there was actually one in, there's like there was one like box of like eight left I, I was there so I was the, the eighth to right, last so like a to case or whatever less than yeah, a case less than a yeah like little display thing in yeah, the yeah. store wow. and, and they said um store employees didn't even know it was launching today they mostly yeah, it came out of nowhere. I didn't came know out of nowhere. This, nothing. Yeah. And uh, so uh, if you're a Nintendo person, if you know a Nintendo person, like I could easily see this as something. And again, Switch 2 is going to come out like they're going to announce it. And I wouldn't. Yeah. Be I mean, I don't think this will impact this. I mean, yeah. Nintendo's Nintendo. Like Nintendo's this doesn't Nintendo. have no impact on the Switch 2 rollout announcement, how well it does. I just would have liked to see, you know, it's, yeah, it's just me course, being greedy, you know, like a like a leak or something versus like, hey, look at this Nintendo alarm clock. I was like, what is, you know, what is this? So so I'll let you all know what, what I think of it. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah. I, like I said, I'm a big Pikmin fan and I waited 10 years for that. So. OK, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, before we jump into what we've been playing, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor. So that's Eclipse.gg. It's a fantastic tool for creating gaming clips, perfect for content creators. And if you want to try it out, you can use the code It's Just Joe 10 to get 10% off and support the show. So if you're in the market for uh, software to help you clip your gaming clips, things like that, definitely check it out and use the code. So we'll dive right in and uh, I'll go last for what I've been playing because honestly, I haven't been playing a lot, so I don't have a ton to bring to the table and we'll talk about why that is. Uh, so, Ray, why don't we start with you on, on kind of what you've been playing? What games have you been diving into here recently? Sure. Um, the main game that I love and I play a lot of uh, is Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap is a it's a card game. Uh, you got your Marvel villains, Marvel ser- uh, superheroes, Mar- uh, Marvel antiheroes. Um, it's a card game that um, Spider-Man's powers, uh, Doctor Strange powers with a uh, certain uh, number of points and powers and stuff that you just slap down and you just play other people online. Um, it's an amazing game. They every month they update the uh, the season with new cards, new characters. And um, it's just a very addicting, competitive game. So I, I, I honestly, I probably played four or five hours of Marvel Snap. Um, I play it on my PC. I also have it on my phone. And um, it, it's just rewarding because you really don't have to spend a lot. They, um, You just play and grind it out and you can get some new cards. Uh, you get uh, gold uh, you get credits. Um, they offer so much stuff. I really appreciate the artwork in Snap. Do, like they, various they artists have, they bring in and that type of thing. That, that I think artists, is so, super cool. Artists from all, there's been an, an artist from Japan, an artist from Spain, an artist from French. Some of the best of the best when it comes to comics. Plus, you can customize your cards. You can put borders and s- certain designs and stuff on the cards mm-hmm. to enhance the cards. But it's a really fun game. Uh, and then I'll just plug another game. Once Human, uh, I stream that. I've been playing that. Uh, shout out to my friend, uh, Houston Aries. Uh, he's been jumping in. This game, oh, my God. You can build a massive home. You can drive a Hummer Jeep. Uh, a motorcycle and you're in this world it's kind of like a sci-fi slash horror game and there's all these uh different uh tasks that you have to do around the world um and it's like it's huge it's almost like a uh, like an mmo because there's other people that are also in the game building their home and playing as well and you can join them and fight the aliens and do the task and stuff so those are the games that I've been playing. Okay. 
Excellent. Well, thank you, Ray. And uh, Purple, why don't we jump over to you? I know some of the games you've been playing because I, I watched you you play some of them. I was furiously taking notes so I could remember all the characters' names and who was who and, and that type of thing. Uh, so I'm sure we'll get into that. But uh, why don't you share with us what you've been playing recently? Yeah, so I stream horror, right? And uh, I just started. I never played it. It's actually one of the reasons I bought a PS5 was for Until Dawn. So I got the remake and I've been playing it. Lots of characters, like you said. I actually have to go back and remember. I think I have it all down who's dating who and who likes who. Uh, so that's what I've been playing on stream. But off stream, you know, where I do a lot of more gaming, um, I've been playing a ton of X Defiant. That's the first person shooter from Ubisoft, which is mm -hmm. similar to like, I think of it as Smash Brothers, but with all the Ubisoft IP. So Rainbow Six, uh, Far Cry, mm -hmm. um, the division has all of those types of factions in there. So I've been playing a lot of that. Uh, and on top of that, I just finished the DLC to assess or to Prince of Persia, which is currently my game of the year, even though I don't get me wrong, black myth, Wukong, which I also beat. I think that's a phenomenal game as well. I just think Prince of Persia does a phenomenal job for what it is. And recently um, starting, I guess it was Tuesday, uh, yesterday morning, I just started Diablo 4, uh, their expansion. And on top of that, I know we're talking about games. I also picked up the newest book from Jason Schreer, which uh. is Play Nice, uh, The Rise and Fall and Future of Blizzard Entertainment. So the, the creators of Diablo, and it's even signed by Jason. I, so Very I got cool. it signed by him too. And awesome. so besides... A plane. I will also be reading a little bit coming up. So, excellent, excellent. Well, unfortunately, this past week I haven't had a ton of time to to play much. Uh, I jumped into a little bit of I want to start more Star Wars Outlaws, and then uh, you know off stream it's really been playing you know games with the kids that type of thing. So I did play some Snap. My oldest, you know, has it on on her phone and that thing, and we'll battle each other, and you know we have a blast doing that. Uh, but I've been so. Uh, swamped and, and deep in the, the game development cycle that I, I just haven't had the time to, to be honest this week. Um, but I am looking forward to, uh, you know, jumping back in, getting some more time in, in Star Wars Outlaws and, and really uh, determining whether I'm going to keep my Ubisoft Plus subscription. So we'll see. Um, I, I do enjoy a bunch of their games, but, you know, we'll see if it's money I want to keep on spending. And uh, that's probably a great segue into uh, kind of what games we're looking forward uh, to, to coming out. What games are we looking forward on the horizon? So whether that's a, a game you're just interested to learn more about, whether it's a game that, you know, is a must buy for you. I, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. Uh, so Purple, why don't we start with you? Yeah, so I just want to first mention really quick that uh, one of my moderators, Ambi, who if y'all come by, you'll most likely see Ambi. He's there probably 90, 95% of the time. He's a Marvel Snap player and he's level 18,000. So he no has kidding. a ton of time. So if y'all ever want to play with him, uh, just come by one of my streams and Ambi is in chat and just mm -hmm. mention Marvel Snap and they will do the more than that. Respect, respect. Uh, for sure. But uh, as far as, uh, and I don't even know what level 18,000 means. I just, it's just, what, <laughs> oh, it's, it's just uh, he's been playing. Yeah. He's been playing. He's been playing he's, a lot. Yeah, since the beginning. But um, so games I'm really looking forward to. So there's one game that's for sure coming out that we know of that I'm looking forward to, which is called Reanimal. It's from yeah. Tarsair Studios. Those are the creators of Little Nightmares. And uh, I'm really looking forward to what they're going to do with Reanimal. It looks kind of like Little Nightmares, but even darker. So uh, really excited about that. And then we got a little teaser two months ago from another franchise I love, 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 and that's Darksiders. So I'm really looking forward to any information from Darksiders. It's one of my favorite franchises. Uh, I have like the comics, the novels, everything. That's like when I talk about lore, I love that. And uh, we've been waiting for a dark side, a true uh, sequel to Darksiders 3, even though Genesis was a very solid game. Uh, I am still really, really looking forward to seeing any news about Darksiders. So Reanimal for sure is coming out in 2025 and any, any hints of what this next Darksiders game is going to look like or be, I'm going to be all over that. Excellent. And how about you, Ray? What are you looking forward to uh, in the future here? 
uh, man, I got uh, two games. Um, I am a huge, huge love my sports games. And there's a free, yes, folks, free football game by uh, Maximum Entertainment. It is Maximum Football, and it's coming out November 7th. And um, it's free, folks. Like, you know how much Madden costs? <laughs> and, and it's the same game, same skins and everything just with a different year well this is a company that um i've been following uh it was a company that was in canada then they sold the game and this company redid the game and it's coming out november 7th where you can customize your team customize your players you can play canadian you can play college and you can play uh like a pro football game so um i played the beta i was beta was okay um so I'm excited about that. And then there's a game right now that you can play on Steam called Off the Grid, where you are a sideboard soldier. Oh, that's right on brand. And can, and <laughs> yeah, it can, is. Check, check it out. Check it out. Imagine you have cybernetic arms and legs, but you need to enhance your body. So you're running and you see some, some better cybernetic legs that you can attach to enhance your running and your speed. And there's guns and there's weapons and there's a jet pack. This game is free, free. And right now there's a lot of people playing it right now on um, the company is called. Uh, Already sounds like it's doing better than Concord. So, you know, <laughs> they're set oh, up for success. Ouch, ouch. But <laughs> Off the Grid is a brand new cyberpunk themed battle royal. And it's in early access. Um, and the co-creator is Neil uh, Blom Camp, and then and it's basically based off the movie District Nine. Uh, I enjoyed you saw that movie. movie. Okay, yeah. well, if you see how those the 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 skeleton armor mm -hmm. and the cybernetic, this is what the uh, and I've been watching the stream this morning. It game looks great. I downloaded it. It's I haven't played it. I downloaded it, but I haven't played it. I'm probably gonna play it right after this show <laughs> excellent excellent that's that's great to hear uh so myself I, i'm gonna come uh obviously with with something quirky that folks probably don't know a lot about but uh i would say one of the games i'm looking forward to is made by a small indie studio called revelation games and the title of the game is called as one we survive uh full disclosure it is a game that i backed on kickstarter to help the game be produced uh, but it's a top-down survival game set in a post-apocalyptic America. You know, there's uh, a blend of, like, survival mechanics, colony management mechanics. You know, basically a story about how far a father will go to, you know, save his uh, his sick child. Uh, you know, so super interesting. Check it out if you're, if you're interested. You can wishlist it on Steam, all that good stuff. And the other game that I'm looking forward to should be coming out here... <clears throat> It should be Q4, so any time now. Uh, time to be determined is called Nightstones. Once again, another small indie game made by a solo developer that I backed on Kickstarter. But if you're into like Zelda type games, that that type of genre, that type of feel, uh, it's a little cozy esque. Uh, definitely one you should check out. Uh, a lot of like world exploration and, and that type of thing. Uh, simple combat, simple controls. Uh, but but the game is it, it, it's really interesting and amazing to see what uh, what one person can create. So that's Nightstones. You can find it on Steam, and uh, you can go ahead and wish that wish list that one today if you would like to as well. So I think that's going to bring us to the outro of the show here, which is always the fun part because I get to thank my guests for joining me this week. So I want to thank both of you for being here. I uh, greatly appreciate it. And then real quick, I want to remind everybody to not miss. Next week's episode, it's going to be an explosive episode because we're going to talk about uh, Spider-Man 2's like first major update. Uh, we'll be talking about like the rise of AI companions and RPGs. And is that like, you know, is it, a, is it the future of gaming? Is it a gimmick? You know, we'll dive into that a little bit. Uh, but before we go ahead and sign off here, uh, why don't you guys uh, tell everybody where they can find you, when you'll be streaming next, that type of thing. And uh, Purple, we'll start with you. Yeah, so thank well thank you Joe for for having me. Uh always uh you're you're amazing. Both of y'all are amazing guests on my my show Shades of Purple. So that's that's my segue into that. Uh stream my show on 
Thursdays at 8 p.m. And I interview either other content creators or give my gaming takes on the industry and then have open lines. Tomorrow's actually going to be an interesting one. There's a Xbox International, Crazy Louie, the head of that show. Yeah, we're going to come on and talk all things Tencent and Chinese gaming. So I'm really looking forward to that conversation. And then on Sundays, you can usually find me streaming horror again sometimes i do fall guys tournaments and that sundays at 8 p.m uh and we might be ch- streaming some other stuff another day i still haven't like uh nailed that down but right now thursdays and sundays on my channel uh shades of purple and you can catch me there all right ray why don't you tell the tell the listeners where they can find you what you'll be streaming next and all that good stuff Sure. Well, I am Ray3473, the gaming cyborg. Uh, I stream on Twitch on uh, Saturday nights. I do Wreckfest with my friends. And then uh, Tuesdays, I play Marvel Snap. On uh, Mondays, um, I do cloud gaming streams. But uh, tomorrow, I have a show that I do. It's called The Rock and Ray Show with uh, Rock, my good buddy. We've been since the Stadia days. love cloud gaming and we talk about cloud gaming news uh reviews and stuff like that and then on friday uh i'm on a panel with my good friend rude Diggs, cloud and console it's the download where we talk about gaming and ai so that's what i got uh going and joe thank you so much uh for inviting me on the show and this is awesome especially uh to be on a panel with purple haze uh, got much uh, respect uh, for her and everything she does. She's awesome. So thank you for having me on here. Excellent. Excellent. Well, once again, yeah, thank you both for joining me. And I'm your host, It's Just Joe. You can find me on YouTube, Twitch, and all the internet places at It's Just Joe. I stream, uh, let's see, Monday and Thursday over on Twitch, kind of just playing gameplay. And then you can find me live on YouTube at 8 p.m. on Sundays, diving into more game dev related topics. So live over on the YouTube, 8 p.m. on Sundays. And uh, that'll do it for this week's episode. Thank you once again, everybody, for joining us. And we look forward to catching y'all next time. Peace. <laughs>